554 miles on the new KLR. Let's go get her to 600 and get this break in done with. Hello, hello, D-Rock here. Welcome to the channel. I hope you all are well. Thank you very much for tuning in. What am I up to? Well, like I just said, this is gonna be the final break-in ride to get me to 600 miles. After that, gonna do a little oil change. I just ordered the Tusk low profile oil plug. So I'm gonna wait till I get that. It's gonna be a few days and then I'm gonna take care of the oil and break-in will be done with my 2022 KLR 650. Pretty stoked about that. So the ride I'm taking it on today to uh, finish her off is uh, one I call the Leeds Loop. And I've done this uh, before on the Honda CRF 300. It's a great ride. Uh, if you're not familiar with the area, I'm coming out of southwest Utah, a little city called St. George. Coming out of the city here, it's mid-May now. Temperature today is 97 degrees, man. It is hot in town. So this ride is going to take me up and onto the dirt. I'll be at the base, well, almost at the base of the Pine Valley Mountains. It'll be a little cooler up there. So uh, I'll have a nice, good long ride on the dirt, which is also going to do two things. It's going to get my miles up, and it's going to give me a good chance to see how the new foot pegs do that I recently installed. Man, what a debacle that was. Did a video on that. Feel free to check that out. I installed the IMS Super Stock foot pegs. They're pretty beefy. I think they'll do just fine. One thing that I have noticed uh, when I recently rode the bike on the interstate and when I'm up at higher speeds, I not only changed out the foot pegs, but I changed out the hardware to the Tusk hard mount hardware. What that did was I removed some rubber that was in the brackets that hold the foot pegs. And now when I'm at higher speeds, the vibration's significant in the foot peg area. But, you know, you can't have everything, and uh, I do intend to take this motorcycle off-road quite a bit, so having the wider, more aggressive foot peg is just better, so I'll take it. A little bit more vibration really isn't that big of a deal in the foot, so no worries. That's the new news with the bike, so let's get riding. Whew, mercy, it is cooking hot. It's not even summer yet. Gonna be a brutal one. So I'll be happy when I get up in elevation a little bit. It's not too much, but it's high enough to get some cooler air on me, which is good. So if I got my numbers right, which I probably don't, uh, this loop, the Leeds loop is what I call it. I think coming out of St. George, it's around between 50 and 60 miles I think I'll get an idea when I look at my mileage when I'm done but I live a little further out of the city so it'll probably be a few more miles than that but generally speaking 50 60 miles so it's a good loop it'll take a few hours to do and uh, it gets you through the city and then up into the the higher desert the base of the mountains there so it's a really cool ride. It's already cooled off a little bit too. Ah, much better. So I should be getting my armor here shortly for the KLR. Like I said, it's mid-May now, going into later May. I was scheduled to uh, get my armor from Happy Trails by the first week of June, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And I will put some pannier racks on shortly after that. I was looking at the pannier racks by Happy Trails and, um, whew, man, expensive. I think it was 1500 bucks. And I'm just, I don't know, man. I just put pannier racks on my Honda CRF. They're the Tusk racks. They seem pretty sturdy. I may just go with the Tusk racks for the KLR. 
and those are just a few hundred dollars. I know the quality's obviously going to be a little different versus the happy trails, but man, I'm <laughs> spending some money on these motorcycles lately. And I just really need them to hold some, some soft pan years currently, so it's I don't think it's that big of a deal to be honest with you. So I may just may just lean into those uh, test pannier racks if they become available. They're out of stock as too. Surprise, surprise. All right, I'm in the little town of Leeds now, which is where the name Leeds Loop comes from for this ride. Quaint little town. And then uh, this is going to be where I get off the asphalt and onto the dirt. So, so take me past Leeds and a little area called Silver Reef. And then I'll be on the dirt. I took the frontage road out of the city to get out here. Interstate's right there to my left. This runs parallel with that. And once again, the wind is howling. So that's why I'm on the frontage road. Because my last experience on the interstate on the KLR with the howling wind was way too much fun. So Good taking some back roads to get out here. All right, here we go. On the dirt, let me look at the miles. So 581. All right, I want to see exactly how far on the dirt we are. This stretch of road's pretty busy, so. I'm gonna take it a little easy. It's it pretty twisty and curvy. And I definitely don't want to end up on the hood of a car or a truck or a side-by-side -side or another motorcycle. So we're gonna enjoy this cruise here. And I've done this loop, like I said, on the CRF, the Honda there. Uh, it's going to be a little more detailed on that video. I'm just going to pretty much just push through this to uh, get me over 600 miles. Oh, let's get some air in the helmet. Nice. Very nice. So the stock tires, they're not bad on the dirt to be honest with you. I did uh, another ride earlier in the break-in. And that was about 40 miles on the dirt. A little farther west towards uh, Nevada, Beaver Dam Wash area. And uh, the tires did really well on this dirt. They weren't as squirrely as I thought they would be. But I'm still going to switch them out pretty soon, probably. Um, still not 100% sure to what. I've even thought about putting the Tusk D Sports on this bike as well since uh, I'm pretty happy with them on the Honda and I'll be putting them on the XT250 and like I said I'll be using this bike off-road quite a bit so why not some knobbiness ain't that big of a deal and they're affordable and they they handle pretty good but I've also looked at some other ones the Kenda big blocks and some others as well so I guess I'll land on that in the uh, very near future and deal with that issue although it's not really an issue currently oh cooler air i'm loving it man it's only mid-may it's gonna be a long summer out here they always are now you can also take this road and uh connect with another dirt road that'll take you to the Oak Grove campground, actually where this vehicle's coming out of right now. And that'll get you pretty high up in elevation. It's beautiful and cooler up there. Some good hiking trails. I'm gonna skip it on this run, but that's an awesome area, as long as it's open. <laughs> All right, up and up. Whew, man, it dust in my eye. Man, it's a breezy one. Take it easy on this right here. Yeah, all right. That's our path straight through the valley there. Very nice. Yeah, aside from the wind, beautiful up here. 
cooler. Loving it. side road here Ooh. that's the brakes Get some dirt up in there Chunk here and there. Detour. Some nice views right there, the Pine Valleys. Yes, indeed. Signal Mountain right over there. Somewhere like that. And off we go. Yeah, pretty good riding. Pretty good riding. Didn't stay cool for very long. Came down a little bit and it's roasting again. Best life in the desert for you. As I'm getting more in the western section of this, the road can get a little ruddy. Yeah, the foot pegs are pretty good. I got a lot, a little bit more platform to stand on now, so it's making my comfort level that much better. And as I mentioned earlier, there's some vibration in them. 
but uh, you know it's it's really not that big of a deal on the dirt at slower speeds you don't even notice it it's just when you're doing like 60 70 miles an hour then uh, they get a little little chattery but no big deal So what I'm about to cross over is called Bitter Creek. And to my left is the start of Bitter Creek Canyon. It's a pretty cool little canyon. Done a couple videos on it. I got any running water here? No. Oh, yes. A little bit. A little bit. on that jeez Whew. well cool weather was short-lived back in the oven man I got a gallon of water on board just in case you can never have too much water Oh, the ruts aren't too bad. They even graded it out. This dirt right here I call talcum powder. It's so fine. And it just, oh man, I almost lost her on that. It gets in everything. Ooh, whoa. Jeez, getting a little squirrely there on that stuff. I do not like the talcum powder. Alright, this is where I don't want to meet another ride. This is a pretty narrow road here. We'll just take it easy going up this. Nice and slow right through here, nice and slow. If I got a ditch, I'll be jumping off a cliff. <laughs> there Got some soft sand and a vehicle all right all right in a rut in a rut not good you got this well that wasn't bad I didn't lose the bike and it ended up on the hood that's pretty close though <laughs> I was in a rut Almost lost her a couple times already in that real fine, soft talcum powder sand. Oh, they got another guy, he's hauling ass. I'm gonna let this dude just get on by me. It ain't worth it. Cause that's how we ride baby we ride to get home absolutely all right well that was the first time i've almost lost the bike a couple times these tires do not care for the soft sand no so they gotta go because where i live and where i ride 
Well, as you can see, I'm in the soft sand a lot. Oosh, man. The minute she hits that soft sand, she wants to twist out. Yeah, these tires, no bueno in that stuff. The hard gravelly stuff, yeah, it's okay, but the minute I get her in the soft sand, it's ain't worth nothing. Whoa. Woo. Got my visor down just in time for that. Oh man, I like the stretch. Nice field of view. See way down there, see what's coming. Very nice. Oh man, now we're back in the heat. Good ride, good ride. <clears throat> oh, look at that. $5.99. We're just about there. Oh, sweet. That's it for descents. Easy riding now. Good lord, is it windy. Where are you at, 600? Come on. Come on. Gotta be close. Gotta be close. Gotta be close. Come on, baby. Hit it. Nope. 600 yes you are broken in Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. well that's at least what the manual says right all right KLR is broken in we're gonna change the oil as soon as I get that low profile plug in from Tusk it should just be a few days nice oh man Felicidades! Oh, man, I have to sit back down. It's so windy. Good lord. It's got to be 25, 30 mile per hour gusts going on. I'm surprised the power poles aren't sideways. Man. Oh, and that's it. There's the asphalt. Boom. Ooh. Let's see. When did I start? Is it 81? 20? No, oh, the dirt road section of that loop is 22 miles. It's not bad. 22 miles of dirt for the final break in ride. Oh, air in the helmet. It is roasting man so much for spring baby it's summer God, Jesus. Wind. man I'm glad I didn't get on the interstate I was thinking about it and I was like ah, that's kind of windy I think I'll skip that yeah it's just unrelenting the spring KLR's heavy, but the wind's out here. She still gets tossed around a little bit. Granted, not as bad as on my 300, but jeez, man, it'll sure push me down on this thing. All right, down, down, down to civilization. There you have it, folks. Break in, done. We'll be well over 600 miles by the time I get home. Probably 620 or so. 
and uh, yeah time to do the service on the bike and then time to ride man time to ride folks as always thank you very much for tuning in and watching I appreciate you joining me on the final break-in ride if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing it really helps us out tremendously it encourages us to keep doing this thank you so much for watching and your support we will see you next time stay safe out there wear your gear folks d-rock out adios